individual has the internal struggles, struggles they would rather keep to themselves away from the scrutiny of others. Meet Chebet, not her real name, who seems okay from the outside, but she carries with her a painful story. It was a day like any other when she boarded a motorbike to go to work when the motorcyclist diverted to what he termed a shorter route. That ride will change her life forever. She felt like the world had conspired against her and she wept for days on end. She opted for counseling. At the recovery center, we met two more women who have also suffered from domestic violence. As mothers and wives, they persevered abuses from their spouses for a long time. Mi kufika saa nne it's like aliona nimekuja kama saa nane usiku ama sijui ni nini. Akaanza kunipiga, kanipiga, kanipiga. Watoto wamelala anawaambia wasijaribu kuongea. For Elizabeth Wambui, her love story turned into a nightmare when she got pregnant. I just wanted a yes or no answer. You promised to take me for the, the baby we are expecting shopping. Are we going so that I can get ready? But he snapped off and started beating me up. She wanted to save her marriage, but in her silence, it would seem she was digging her own grave. At a point where now he takes a metal and he's strangling, he's strangling me. He wants to kill me. And he's swearing curses and say, swearing how he will kill, kill me and kill the children. Counseling for both women was a seven grace that brought them peace and healing. They want other women to break the silence on gender-based violence. Stop keeping quiet because keeping quiet first of all is the enabling factor for these people. Fina Nyakwara, a case manager from the Gender Violence Recovery Center, attributed most gender-based violence in Kenya to patriarchal culture. And because again when you look on the culture and the stereotyping in the society, sometimes it drags the elimination of gender-based violence in the in Kenya actually. But it just calls for it calls for so many individuals or partners just to work towards elimination. Abar Sadi, a safety consultant calling for a collective responsibility to eliminate gender-based violence. It's not an individual responsibility. It's a responsibility of the state that those women work on or operate in. It's a responsibility of the organizations on general and the organizations that are working on the women issue. So it's not only the responsibility of the woman only to protect herself, but it is related to the society. The gender-based violence hotline 1195 works in partnership with the Ministry of Public Service and Gender to help victims get fast assistance to healthcare systems. Nowhere in the world is a woman safe from violence. The need to unite and invest in the key preventive measures will go a long way to eliminate violence against women.
Good morning and welcome to News Check. On this fateful day, this is the conversation, the story that has just been aired and done by my very colleague, that is Pauline, has been discussing what has been concerned to not just the nation, but to civil societies, government institutions, and we'll be speaking to some of them this morning in regards to the increase of femicide cases that have been witnessed. But before we do start our conversation, I would like to give you a context of what has been happening since the last five years or so which we'll be sharing with you and of course in form of graphics of how many women we have lost in our country since back in 2019. Once I do have those graphics, we'll be sharing with you. And of course, joining me this morning on the other side of the studio will be Dr. Joyce M. Mutinda, the chairperson of the National Gender Equality Commission, that is NGEC. And of course, Dennis Otieno, the senior legal counsel at FIDA Kenya. And also, we'll be having Senator Tabitha Mutinda and finally we'll be having Jerry, the CEO of Usikimia, who will be joining us in just a few. But let me start with Senator, given that this has been something, has been witnessed in the country since the start of January 2024. Senator, good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. We start on that note. Let me get your opening remarks of what we have been witnessing in the country for the last few weeks. <coughs> Uh, thank you uh, for having us this uh, great morning and let me start by giving my condolences still again to the uh, families of the beloved ones who lost the beautiful young girls. Uh, it's sad and uh, we still give our condolences to these uh, great families and say that uh, nobody deserves to die uh, in terms of being murdered with uh, what we've been able to see. The constitution is very clear yes. in terms of uh, 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 chapter 27 <coughs> in regards to human rights. Everybody is, uh, is, uh, deserves equal protection. Nobody is above the law, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the government has put measures. You look at uh, the police stations, we have the gender desk yeah. uh, that uh, uh, are in place and uh, what has been happening has been uh, quite, you know, taken time and has been repeating so much of itself. And, and, and as leaders, then we go back and then start asking, what is the root cause? Mm -hmm. A step backwards and asking, why are we having these cases so rampant at this particular time yeah. in the year 2024? They have increased so much and it is really worrying because looking at the young generation and the, especially the female child, you know, the, the, the girl child, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's quite sad. And as leaders, uh, we really condemn it with the strongest terms uh, possible. Yeah. Uh, and then we ask, did it have to get to the media reporting the issue of uh, the murderer called Matara? Because to me he's a murderer yeah. uh, with the incidents of the young beautiful girl. Then we get to a point then um, we are trying to uh, further into the analysis of all this happening. It's quite very, very sad. Mm -hmm. But I'm very happy and I really want to appreciate the young girls who have really come out and spoken and told their stories because it is, it, it is then through that then we get to understand more and also as leaders, as parents, yes. we get to ask ourselves, mm -hmm. what is the root cause? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, when, when, when our kids get up and, and uh, it ends up becoming a crime scene yeah. as parents and leaders we step back and ask ourselves there's so many questions that i believe we are going to discuss mm -hmm. this morning okay senator let me toss it over to Dr. Dr. you've just issued a statement last week as the the national gender equality commission that is ngek you have been taken aback with the recent incidences um the question will be um from where you see Dr. this is not the first time we have witnessed this in the country what could be the root causes of such incidences Thank you very much and thank you for having us. Mm. And again, also thank you for bringing this particular uh, question up. Mm -hmm. Allow me just to refer mm -hmm. the Kenyans to chapter 4 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. Yes. It is a chapter about rights. And one of the rights that cannot be taken from anyone mm -hmm. is the right to life. If you look at... Uh, Article 26, sub-article 1, every person has a right to life. Mm -hmm. And in that same article, sub-article 3, it says, if you allow me to read yes. verbatim, mm -hmm. a person shall not be deprived 
of life intentionally and i want to underline the word intentionally yes except to the extent authorized by this constitution or other written law mm. now what we have witnessed is life being taken <coughs> intentionally mm. and unfortunately it is being taken for the females this comes soon after we had the 16 days of activism yes. against gender-based violence mm. from the 25th of November 2023 all the way up to 10th December mm. and uh, we did quite a number of activities uh, telling everybody we have seen intimate partners are the pers persons who are actually inflicting this and as I speak to you my heart bleeds yes. because other than that the two that uh, we are mentioning in um, some of this Airbnb yes. we have somebody who just killed his wife Mm. girlfriend in the house mm. and the person walks away you put a question to me mm -hmm. what is the root cause of this and in my own small way I think we have three things that we need to look at and one is to the girl child as a mother and a grandmother and a mother-in-law mm. I want to educate all the girls in this country and the women mm. if it comes to your intimate partner wanting to hit at you, please walk away. Preserve your life. The country is duty bound to preserve your life. But you cannot stand there and say, since the constitution uh, protects me, I'll stand here and I'll be alive. So I just urge our girls to walk away. Mm. Because one of the root causes is staying in that toxic atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Think of those who go to the little places they call Airbnb or in hotels. Mm. And you are meeting somebody you have not met before. I would urge our girls, if you are meeting that person, that nice person you met online, kindly meet them in an open place. A place where if they hit at you, mm -hmm. uh, you'll be protected by the environment. Mm -hmm. Don't go to a corner where this person has an advantage over you. Okay. Because that is what has been happening. Mm -hmm. The other one seems to be to the side of parents like me. Have mm -hmm. we done our parenting properly? Mm -hmm. Is this the generation that has been brought up by house helps mm -hmm. that they refer to as auntie? Have we sat our girls down and talked to them? Have we sat our boys down and talked to them? Mm -hmm. Because if the boy child knows that this is my sister, I have to take care of them there is law against it, I'm sure this will not be happening. Uh -huh. So there are quite a number of root causes that I see. Yeah. And the last of them being what we call poverty. Uh -huh. Because in some of the cases you can see somebody really wanted to make some little money uh -huh. because they did not have that. But if we had inclusion, if we don't discriminate women in places of work, uh -huh. they get job, they get empowered, I don't think we'll have this situation. Okay, so sorry. we must go to the bigger story where we are going to have inclusion mm -hmm. of everybody and equal access to, if I may say, not only to jobs, but also to businesses. Okay, Let me leave it at there okay. for now. Okay, for uh, now we leave it at there. But before I engage, um, Dennis, of course, he's from FIDA and also the Federation of Women, uh, the Federation, uh, the, which is FIDA, has also issued a statement in regards to this particular matter. You even gave us um, statistics of last year that we almost, we even lost uh, 10 women uh, in a similar fashion uh, in this particular case. And of course, if you're just joining us, dear viewers, we're discussing the alarming rate uh, of these femicide cases that have been witnessed in the country and momentarily we'll be sharing with you graphics uh, for the last four years since back in 2019 what we have witnessed and how many people we've been able to lose um, in regards to the femicide cases that we have witnessed. I can see already the reactions being created online of course under the hashtag um, the hashtag of a shutdown Kenya of course pre peaceful pro processions will be held from uh, the 27th Osikimia FIDA and other uh, women rights organizations will be leading
leading and other civil societies will be leading this particular venture and we do have them here in our studios. Once again, let me get to introduce uh, our, our guests this morning. We do have uh, Dr. Joyce M. Mutinda, the chairperson of the National Gender Equality Commission, which is NGEC. We also do have Dennis Otieno, senior legal counsel at uh, FIDA Kenya. And finally, we do have a legislative in the House, that is Senator Tabitha Mutinda, to all talk about some of these legislative proposals, if they might come up at the end of the day, given that Parliament is set to resume next month. Let me head over now to Dennis. Dennis, good morning and welcome to the show. FIDA just recently issued a statement in regards to this particular matter. As Kenyans, from where you sit, should we be worried? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Abdi Aziz. Mm -hmm. The most unfortunate thing we've witnessed as 2024 has begun. Those graphics, we're back on air. This is News Check. Those graphics have uh, been covered extensively, and of course, there are various sources who have been able to give us some of those graphics. We start off what femicide represented to um, this particular country. It represented the most extreme form of violence against women. According to a UN report, 38.5% of girls and women aged between 15 to 49 in Kenya have experienced any form of physical violence at least once in their lifetime. That is the general definition of what femicide is to not just the country but to the extensive part of the globe. Now, since 2019, at least 85 women have been killed countrywide. Now, some of the victims range from four years to 70 years. The majority of the victim, and which we have witnessed for the last few years, is between 21 and 30 years at the prime of their life. Now, 49% of the victims were killed by either their boyfriends, husbands and former lovers and 51% were killed by criminal gangs and unknown people. Now that is from the source which is the code for Africa. Let's head over to a period where we exhibited COVID-19 and the restrictions that came with the quarantine. Now former gender cabinet secretary that is Margaret Kobe reported that cases of gender-based violence such as physical assault and defilement had increased by 92% during the quarantine. This was the highest we have ever experienced in the country and it was exacerbated by the measures undertaken during the COVID-19 year. Now to 2021, at least there were some leeway and of course there was a little bit of the measures being pulled out by the government. And But 58 femicides were reported between the month of January all the way to October. Now of the murders, 21 were adult, while unfortunately 27 were children. Now to the next year where we experienced um, the general election, 10 cases of femicides have been reported in the media with many more cases remaining unreported. Now this source was from the Federation of Women Lawyers in Kenya, that is FIDE, and of course we do have a representative who is a Dennis here in the house. This is the latest figure that FIDA gave us through the press briefing they issued um, in their headquarters. Now, in the year 2023, this is just but two cases that have been reported in the media, but there are many more. Now, the cases of femicide already reported extensively is that of Stalit Wahu Mwangi, the 26-year-old Wahu's lifeless body was found in an Airbnb in South B, Nairobi County. Now, she was last seen getting into the Airbnb on January 3rd at night. Now, a postmortem examination of the body showed she was strangled. Now, another case that is also 
uh, we're keenly following, even us as a media house, is in regards to Rita Waini Mwendo in Waisambu, the 20-year-old 20 20 woman who is also a student of the Jomo Kenyatta International University of Agriculture and Technology. Now, Mwendo's dismembered body was discovered at a residential apartment. Those are the grim statistics we do have from since 2019 till today. Of course, there are many more unreported cases. Now, it is, of course, extensively to the globe itself. Now, an average of 137 women across the world are killed by a partner or a family member daily. Now, to this report, an average of five women every 60 minutes, of course, exhibit a form or they experience any forms of sexual gender-based violence. Now, the report also showed that 87,000 women were killed internationally in 2017. 30,000 of these killings um, were at the hands of their current or former partners. This is from the United Nations drugs and crime report that they published back in 2017 extensively covering all the way to 2023 now to some of the regulations that the government have issued of late so that they can ensure that these cases at least are nubbed in the back is withholding of identification documents for airbnb visitors temporarily and of course ensuring cctv and security cameras are in a proper working condition and of course this will be discussing in the second hour with different sets of our guest and of course we'll do have a private security firms here with us we'll do also have an airbnb representative but in the first hour we do have a critical sector players from the national gender equality commission that is in gek a legal a senior legal counsel from fida kenya and of course we do have a legislator in the house who is senator tabitha mutinda before we went for a short commercial break i was supposed to um tap it to dennis otieno dennis welcome once more and we do apologize for that but particular glitch but FIDA issued a statement just last week and of course some of those 10 cases that we've seen through our graphics were reported by none other than FIDA Kenya I asked you this particular case question should be worried as Kenyans thank you so much Abdiaziz. first of all we sincerely pass our sincere condolences to the families of the victims across the nation because we we know that the few cases that we've been able to see have been reported but there are many more that are unreported that are always coming up every other day you ask me a good question should we be worried and i had answered earlier that indeed we should be worried because what we are having there the statistics that we've just shared even with the general public are not wholesome statistics by this i mean that those are of the reported cases those are known cases every other day even if you walk into these law courts the high courts actually you've just seen recently that our very honorable chief justice has had a conversation with the president to be able to increase the number of judges an increase of the number of judges is just showing you the amount of cases that are coming in through the court system the judicial platform and not all these cases are usually reported even on the media if you walk into the high courts and see cases with regards to murder cases that are femicide based you won't see all of them being reported. It's only highlights that will be reported. This actually shows that there's a very, very worrying trend and awareness creation was very critical. That is why, in fact, the Federation of Women Lawyers, that is known as FIDA Kenya, engaged in the public outcry, gave, gave a press statement, because that was the only fastest way that the, that the nation would actually come to terms with the fact that there is a growing concern there is a growing concern with relations to femicide that there is there are perpetrators out there who are actually taking advantage of young women as you have reportedly saw that the ages most affected are between 21 to 30 that is the youth that is the young women and these perpetrators even if you see the like uh, john matara if you see the nigerians even from their build mm. you would see that they are of an older set an older build mm. so that you would see that they are ranging from the ages of perhaps 30 35 if you are to average it and then you would realize that with this kind of uh, this kind of trend mm. that is happening in the country that our young ladies are being taken advantage of they're entering into society, they're just coming maybe fresh from high school, mm -hmm. entering campus, and entering through the campus chain, other people are actually 
taking advantage of them. We had a very good conversation, in fact, with uh, various campus leaders wherein we were able to pick out a number of issues mm. and concerns and we were asking them. We are seeing a particular trend that young women, you've even reported from 2019, mm. 2020, I believe just uh, 2023, that mm. is last year, we've had uh, this young man who, has, who was arraigned in court in 2019 mm. for having brutally taken the life of Ivy Wangeshi, mm. who was a medical student in Eldoret. Mm. And he has just been in the judgment was just read last year in the year 2023. Mm. And you can see that if that case was being followed for the entire four years mm. amongst other cases you didn't have had enough time to capture each and every case mm. as FIDA we have uh, three offices around the country mm. and each and every time we are capturing a lot of data mm. from the different sets of the counties mm. like we have an office in Nairobi we have another one in Mombasa and another one in Kisumu mm. and the data loads that are streaming in and the reason even we were reaching out to the families is because, one, the case does not end by the perpetrator being caught. Yes. There is this journey of four years. This journey of four years. Mm -hmm. We have our advocates who assist in watching brief. Mm -hmm. We have our in-house counsellors and even counsellors who assist us in enabling psychosocial support mm -hmm. and the kind of tales that these families will tell you of what they found. Okay. For instance, this very recent uh, case where it's two Nigerians who were arrested yes. for brutally uh, mutilating the body of the young girl. Linked. It has not been proved yet. It right? has not been, uh, yeah. it has not been proved. Mm. Thank you so much for that clarification. Mm. It's still an allegation and they are still suspects. Yes. But if you are the family members who came and found that this was your daughter, sister wife or even a friend if you found the body in that state mm. the trauma that would have been left even to you let alone the gen the members of the public in that particular building yes. who woke up in the morning somebody waking up at six to rush to work mm. that is the site they meet first mm. that is the reason for the outcry okay Yes, thank mm -hmm. you. Let me head over to Senator. Senator, given that you're a youth leader yourself, uh, you have seen ma majority of these cases are people who are losing their lives at the prime of their life. And aside from the contributing factors that have been attributed to such incidences, like we have witnessed one is poverty, other one is even to the extent which is very brutal and gruesome um, organ harvesting of some of these young girls, and of course some of them are men as well. Is there more that meets the eye when it comes to such incidences? Uh, Abdi, let me start uh, by uh, appreciating that uh, what Dennis has talked about in regards to uh, what the president uh, did the other day after the dialogue with the, yes. the CJ Kome. And you see from where we see the opposition was kind of uh, bringing a narrative of, uh, I mean, this should not be happening. But now we have results in terms of increasing the judiciary yes. so as to have uh, deliverable and, and timely services mm -hmm. uh, to the Kenyans because of the rampant cases that are in place and uh, they need to be, you know, uh, sorted out. Mm -hmm. Now, back to the issue of these causes. Uh, one, yes, poverty is one of the, the re greatest reasons. Mm -hmm. But the other top of the greatest reason is the mental health issue. Yes. There is, there is a big uh, crisis as far as the issue of mental health is concerned. If, if you look at the data that you've been able to share, mm. husbands, you know, uh, 200 and uh, around over 200, boyfriends, over 100, uh, uh, friends, ex-husbands, these are people that we've related with, yes. you know, because I'm a representative of the, of the, of the, of the people, and mm. as a woman, mm. I, I, I talk on behalf and say, We've related with them nicely and, and over a couple of duration. We are not even strangers. And, and this uh, happens in terms of the killings that are taking place. Yeah. What is the cost of all this, you know? Uh, uh, and you, you, you go back to, uh, away from the, even the poverty issue, when, when a husband and a wife have stayed for the longest, we've seen these cases, these domestic violence cases, yeah. and they end up, you know, uh, doing the worst that, and the least that is expected. And, and I would say, it's it's the high time that as as uh, as families as married couples as people who are also dating and relating it's it's good to really increase 
the levels of communication. Because it's until you speak out, it's until you talk, it's until we communicate, then we can be able to know where, then what is the problem? Because the solution is not killing. But Abdi, allow me to say as it is this mm -hmm. morning. Femicide today, femicide is when women are killed, and especially by people who know them. But who's the killer? Abdi, the killer is the man gender. So I want to say, men stop killing our girls. Mm. Men stop killing our sisters. But stop not killing all of us, our women. Senator. Of course, not mm. all of them. Of yeah. course, not all of them. But for us to call it femicide, as mm. the media has also called it femicide correctly, mm. but we need to agree that then it is the male gender that is, you know, doing what it's doing. Mm. Then we go back then, why do they have to do it? mental issues mm. you know they're not maybe able men are not able to come out and discuss their frustrations their marital issues mm. their challenges financial challenges work issues you might even find a man has lost his, lost his job is not able to tell uh, the spouse that this is the condition but they will leave them in the morning well dressed in a very nice suit and still go out there and come back in the evening. maybe because then how do we lower our ego and say this is the reality of the things you know mm. frustrations pile up pressure piles up you know mm -hmm. and all this because of the responsibility of the man but mm -hmm. what is the solution what is the way forward mm -hmm. the way forward is just that talk that communication uh, that is mostly uh, in, in relation to the couples that have, have related for the longest of course relatives friends these are people that you know each other an ex-husband coming and you know uh, uh, doing the least expected and killing but mm -hmm. let's go back to our generation I am an ambassador of digital literacy. I advocate for digital. Mm -hmm. And you can see the government has worked through the Ministry of ICT to increase digital services in this country. From mm -hmm. where we started when we came to government, it was about 300 services. And now we are almost at ab above 15,000 services. Okay, Airbnb, mm -hmm. Abdi, is mm -hmm. one of the uh, platforms through digital yes. that you can be able to acquire services. Mm -hmm. Has Airbnb started yesterday? No, mm -hmm. it's been there over five years. It's a business venture like mm -hmm. any other venture okay. okay but now where we are we've, we we should address mm -hmm. as the issue as to why then our girls would be able to trust a stranger mm -hmm. and from that perspective if i'm in their shoes i would say one is you, you, you've met this person. Yeah. This person is so nice. This person is so mm -hmm. convinced. This person is so sweet. Mm -hmm. And you end up trusting because you're looking and seeking for what is natural, mm -hmm. the, the, the love. There are things that I've said, God gave us. And God gave us some of these things that we don't, know, don't need to go to a shop and buy. It's not like bundles or airtime. Okay. Courtesy, love. Being gentle, you know, mm -hmm. those are things that are natural. So when you meet someone who seems and sounds to be courteous, sweet, gentle, mm -hmm. it is attraction. It's a point of attraction. Okay. And like for the case of the young uh, girl from Makueni, uh, and may soul rest, and I know what the, par the relatives must be going through. Uh, wh one thing that I noted is that she told the guardian or the parent, that I'm going to meet a friend. Mm -hmm. Was that a, a problem? That is not a problem. That is okay. Because the girl has been able to say, I'm going to meet someone. She didn't, of course, expect that it will end up like that. Mm. She didn't expect. She was maybe seeking and thought that, wow, this person who's been talking so nice, maybe I've found the person that maybe God wanted me to be with for the rest of my life. Okay, sorry. But sadly, it comes mm -hmm. that, of course, that is not what she expected. Of course, she was a student. She was studying. She, she knew probably what she wanted. Mm -hmm. Wanted, I mean. And now, look at the other issue now, the rituals issues. Mm -hmm. And allow us to say it as it is. Because with uh, uh, the suspects that has, have been uh, arrested, you look at even what the uh, government pathologist, uh, Dr. Bo uh, Duot, said. Yeah, door, yes. He said that he has never seen what he saw because then this is something on another level. Okay, so Senator. it is a business. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a cult with business. Okay. Let's go back again, Abdi. Allow mm -hmm. me to say Finally. the cultural mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. okay, that we are moving away from, the mm -hmm. moral issues we are moving away from. Okay. You know? So this girl was innocent trying to you know, g g go get uh, this. But back to the issue of the parents. Yes. Let us be able to be keenly discuss okay. with our, uh, our kids, both mm -hmm. the boy child and the girl child. When you see them with a phone costing 100000 
Where is it coming from? Okay, Let's just sit and discuss because wait, mm -hmm. you are paying school, you are paying a semester. Mm -hmm. You are a parallel student. Okay. You are paying a semester, it's 80,000 or 100,000. Okay, As a parent, it's a challenge to pay. What about this commodity that this kid is having? Why are we not having this discussion? Okay, Senator, we have to rope in Daktari as well. I can see she's itching uh, to chime in into the conversation. But let me get to introduce uh, one of our final guests who have just joined us. That is Njeri Wamigwi. Hopefully I've said that correctly. The Chief Executive Officer of Osikimi. It is some of this activism and of course the civil societies which have been at the heart of some of these cases. They do receive some uh, majority of these cases similar to FIDE as well. But before I go to Njeri, let me go back to Daktari. Daktari, you can respond to the issues the Senator has also raised. But from the graphics that we have been able to play on the screen, you have seen this has been a recurring theme every year. What are we missing to do to curb such cases? Yes, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much. What is it that uh, we are missing to curb such cases? Mm -hmm. Let me take ourselves to the judiciary. The judiciary saw that we were actually taking too long with some of these cases. Yes. And uh, they went ahead. The Chief Justice went and opened GBV courts. Yes. And this is one avenue that is going to help us so that the cases are dealt with mm -hmm. within the shortest time possible and that being the case the perpetrators uh, will will change tact mm -hmm. so that is uh, one of the areas now what else are we missing public education mm -hmm. i think i like the ngos because they will go out there and call it as it is mm -hmm. so that everybody gets to know this vice is in our society it must be fought and it must be fought by everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm not just saying it is NGOs. Even government itself. There are arms of government that should go out and fight. And one of those is actually NGEC. Mm -hmm. We have a mandate to deal with public education. Are we doing enough? Mm -hmm. We should go out and do enough. We educate our special interest groups. And one of those groups happens to be women. The other group happens to be the youth. And those are the two groups that have got issues when it comes to matters uh, femicide. What else are we lacking? Proper statistics. I think our colleague from FIDA was saying um, still there is a lot not done. So we need to get out. The researchers in this country need to get out and get hard data on femicide. Okay. I'm looking at uh, the University of Nairobi. They have a full arm where they are dealing with matters uh, gender and women. We have Ke Kenyatta University and many other universities. Are our researchers doing enough? And for those development partners who are supporting research, have we gone to these institutions so that the academia is roped in? Mm. I know we have a mandate to deal with research and collect data. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a partner, Equality Now, we have come up with some system for GBV so that we collect the data and collate that data and we be picking it from the hospitals, from the police, mm -hmm. from any other arm of government. Now, this, uh, as I talk to you, this is something that is going to be rolled out 2024 okay. so that we are able to say it is reported and what is reported, even if we miss out, the margin of error will be very small. Mm -hmm. So data, we need to deal with it. Let us not leave out our uh, uh, the world of academia. Let us educate our youth, both female and male, so that they know what uh, we have in our constitution. But again, uh, when I look at uh, a senator, I'm asking myself, mm -hmm. the legislation we have, is it okay. adequate? Mm -hmm. And my answer is still no. Mm -hmm. Because even the Sexual Offences Act, mm -hmm. we are in the process of bringing it back to Parliament mm -hmm. so that it can be amended. So we also need to look at the gaps. And those gaps 
we need to come up with legislation. Okay, Daktari. Thank you. Now, let me get to introduce once more Njeri Wamigwi, the CEO of Usikimi. Given that you have heard from Daktari there from GEC, they're asking for research. And of course, you are one of those institutions that do receive numerous cases in regards to such incidences, even sexual gender-based violences, without disclosing their names or telling us their background or which county they come from. What are the nature of cases that you, you, you receive as an institution? Majority of the cases we receive are domestic violence, mm -hmm. um, rape, rape, and um, so we will just conclude sexual violence, which which involves both rape, defilement, molestation, mm -hmm. and um, we receive a lot of that. We also have cases that have ended up being femicide cases. Last year we handled about five of those, um, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mostly that. Mm -hmm. So domestic violence, intimate partner violence, sexual violence, which I have defined and the way it falls under. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, we also, within that, we also receive cases that involve a lot of economic violence as well as psychological violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, the recent incidences that we have been witnessing on, you have just joined us. Give us your remarks on those incidences themselves. Um, first of all, mm -hmm. um, both as a woman, as a Kenyan, mm -hmm. and as somebody who works in gender-based violence, I'm in grief, I'm grieving, mm -hmm. because of the nature and the brutality of the cases that we have seen. Um, not just the two cases that the media has taken up and mm -hmm. run away with, mm -hmm. because I feel like also media sensationalizes a lot of the cases, mm -hmm. because we know of two cases, yet within those 10 days, there were other eight women and we are not seeing their names. We haven't even captured some of their names. Uh, they're just unnamed women. Uh, whereas the one that could you know, get the more clicks, the more views, mm -hmm. uh, are the ones that we are talking about. Um, for me, I grieve for each and every woman who has been killed. Mm -hmm. um, and in the nature that they have all been killed. Because you cannot be cooking ugali and somebody just beheads you. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it talks into the brutality um, of the killing which actually is a marker when we are talking about femicide. Uh, one of the, of the markers of femicide when we're looking at both the sexual and the gender monitors is the brutality of the killing as well as the disposing of the body, as well as the intimate, you know, um, femicide cases. The reason they are femicide and not homicide, I'm sure my colleagues went and delved into that, mm -hmm. is, is actually because there is sexual violence that is intimated as part of the killing. Mm -hmm. And that is what differentiates it from homicide. Mm -hmm. And as a nation, we should be grieving. Mm -hmm. We should be putting our flags at half mast and, and, and speaking into where have we failed as a country? Because I feel as a country we have failed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we should be declaring this a national disaster mm -hmm. because when a nation of people starts killing the other part, we, as a country, when you look at our statistics, we are generally at an even number. So when one part of the nation is killing the other. What does that speak about us? Our culture as a people, as a people of Kenya, what does that say about us? Mm -hmm. How do we treat us? Because the women who have died are also part of us. Um, Rita Waini should be here. She was a student. Mm -hmm. She should be in class studying like any other person. Mm -hmm. But what we have done is we have taken her death, brutalized her, victim blamed a child, because she's 20, she's a child. Mm -hmm. She was a university student and defined her by the nature of her death. Without even knowing anything about her, we drew conclusions and, and ran away with them. Mm. What does that speak about our culture, even our internet culture? What does that speak when, as a nation, the comments that we are seeing are heavily misogynistic, very trolling, you know? We are trolling, and I can't even imagine the grief I would feel if that is my child. I feel it, and I'm not even her parent, but mm -hmm. as a person, when you come onto the internet and I, dr I write, rest in peace, Rita, and you come and you take away the humanity of the person who has died and instead say this person died because of money without even counting how deeply hurtful and how I, I can't even imagine. Mm. I, I'm here to humanize the people. Yes. I, I'm here to make sure that even as we talk about these deaths, we are also humanizing the people who died. Mm. And I think that is one of the things that we have forgotten. We are looking at statistics rather than looking at the humanity behind the names of the people 
the women, let me just be emphatic, mm -hmm. the women that have died, because today we are talking about femicide. And uh, the other thing that is very noticeable about this death is we, women have died, we are saying this is femicide, right? And the fact that, and unfortunately, this is a lot of men, and also a few women that I have seen, want to center this conversation and ask, what about men? Mm. That is not how things are supposed to happen. When we speak about femicide, we are speaking about issues of women. Mm -hmm. When we are speaking about other deaths that have happened that maybe include men, we are not going to center women in that conversation. Mm. It is not a gender war. This is, we are talking about issues of women. Mm -hmm. It means right now the issues on the table are issues of women. It doesn't mean that men are excluded. Mm -hmm. It means men should come and join us in solidarity. When we say not all men, actually, how do you say that? Mm -hmm. Not all men. How do we know which men are supposed to be there? Mm -hmm. When the voices of good men want to say not all men, instead of solidarity, mm -hmm. joining us and saying, look, women are being killed as men. Can we speak? Can the voices of the good men drown the voices of the negative men? Mm -hmm. But we are not seeing that. We are seeing men who say, I'm a good man, so it's not me. Mm -hmm. Then we are not speaking to you when we speak about these issues. We need your voice to add on to us in solidarity and say we need accountability from men. Mm -hmm. So we, those are the kind of questions we should be having and discussions we should be having. Mm -hmm. I need to hear the voices of the good men. Where are the good men? Mm -hmm. Where are you not just saying not all men yes. we need you to say yeah. as men can we solidly stand behind our sisters mm -hmm. so that we can ensure this doesn't happen again okay uh, okay let it be known abdiaziz hashim is in solidarity <laughs> with the initiatives that you're undertaking let it, that be on record let me head over to senator as we wind up this particular conversation senator kewapa came out your fellow uh, female colleagues from the national assembly clearly stated to what jerry is talking about mm -hmm. calling it for what it is a mm -hmm. national disaster yes. should the government consider that uh yes i do agree that uh, that is what it should be considered for mm -hmm. because abdi we agree that the femicide is us being killed and mm -hmm. i say us because i'm a woman yes. that woman has been uh, who's who's now his soul is resting i'm a representation of them and mm -hmm. it is sad and i want to add to 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 what uh, madam has said in regards to uh, uh be it being seen like it's just us women mm -hmm. it is the high time abdi and the other media stations, mm -hmm. you bring the men on this panel, mm -hmm. ask them what is their view on this issue of femicide. Why have you not brought men to discuss this issue? Mm -hmm. Why only the female? Why mm -hmm. us who are grieving? Actually, we are grieving. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are mourning. Actually, we are sad. Mm -hmm. Because as we speak each and every time, a woman is being harassed, a woman is being beaten. The other day, before we closed, uh, uh, we went for recess, mm -hmm. I had a statement on the incidents on Thika Road, mm -hmm. on that girl who was mis being mishandled by the conductor. Mm -hmm. And I'm still following up, and I'm okay. happy because the COCS, uh, CPD Kasarani took action uh, on it, and the case is, uh, is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Because we see, and why is it that you have not given the men the opportunity to, for us to hear their views? Because majority majority of these cases are mm -hmm. being castigated by men mm -hmm. we need as female leaders as female as women in general to hear what they have to say is this an opinion that they have that they can be able to advise us mm -hmm. when you talk about uh, um, um, this discussion these talks this uh, this message and all that what is their take because mm -hmm. we are not really much we've not had them come out and tell us anything. Is there something that we are doing wrong that we need to do right? Mm. And when we go back to the issues of the domestic violence, yes. as earlier discussed, before it gets to a murder situation, mm -hmm. it is starts by someone pointing a finger on you, by just someone even going silent on you. Okay, Senator. We need to say the truth and start saying, when you start seeing the signs, communicate, discuss. If it is not workable, Men, if it is not working with us, just don't kill us. Go your way. Let me go my way. Mm -hmm. I will find a future. And you find. Because one, we have a common denominator. Okay, so no. Sometimes we have the children in place. Mm -hmm. What kind of children then are we bringing up as parents? Mm -hmm. Because if you kill me, if my husband kills me, mm -hmm. then what do you expect about my son and my daughter to do? They will emulate. 
the same. Okay, so it's Senator. the high time. If it is not working, mm -hmm. we are saying. If it is not working, let us be. Okay. Let us be. And I want to talk to the young Finally. girls. Finally. Yes, I want mm -hmm. to talk to the young girls, the mm -hmm. age of 20. Yes, parents, this is a time that you need to see your kid dating. It is normal. Because if you're also not seeing them, then you're wondering which category do they belong to. Mm -hmm. It is normal for us to see them dating and going through. But young girls, kindly, do an open dating. Let mm -hmm. us also, as parents, be able to throw an eye from afar mm -hmm. and be able to help you look around and see what kind of a person it is. And I say, the, the, the social media, okay. post your people so that we tell you this one is uh, somebody's uh, mm -hmm. uh, person mm -hmm. or can be your person. Okay, and Senator. it becomes open. Mm -hmm. We're pressed for time. Let me go to Dennis. Dennis, your final remarks, given that we have to wind up this first session. Your final remarks on this issue. Thank you so much. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Sitting on the panel today, and uh, mm. the only <laughs> male. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure has piled up all yes. over. Yes, you see, I had to voice my uh, my support for yes. for the initiative, but it is it truly. Is, yeah. I hope it is not disingenuous. And you yeah, no, it's not are disingenuous because I have sisters as well. Mm -hmm. It's very genuine. Yeah, I too take the same sentiments with Abdiaziz. I, Dennis Otieno, do stand in solidarity yes. with women to fight against femicide. Mm -hmm. My closing remarks would be, it is very concerning, and I have had my fellow panelists also share this, that when such crimes are happening, the first instance is to victim blame. Mm -hmm. You write, rest in peace, the next comment, in fact, if you were even to highlight the comments, you would even cry. Mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. this person deserved it, this person mm -hmm. was uh, going after money, it's a gold digger. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, so we are looking for reasons to actually commit murder. Mm -hmm. Is that what we are saying as a community? Mm -hmm. Is that yes. what we are saying as a society? Mm -hmm. That we've, we've thoroughly eroded our culture, our moral principles, to the extent that we are not even respecting the dead anymore. Mm -hmm. We are justifying their death in the most gruesome of ways. Mm -hmm. And my closing remarks would be from the standpoint of uh, the Federation of Women Lawyers, this is what we battle every day. This is what we wake up to battle every day. Mm -hmm. The awareness creation that we do through our community sensitization forums are to essentially just educate the members of the public mm -hmm. that we cannot co incorporate a culture so toxic as mm -hmm. this and feel that it is normal. Okay. That is why even protests are being planned, peaceful protests for that matter, to ensure that the general public is very aware that at the end of the day, we okay. cannot actually sit somewhere mm -hmm. and actually start saying that it is normal just because you feel where you're seated as a social media user okay. that this person was doing something that was against your principles. Okay. And maybe in closing, I would say, mm -hmm. There are victims out there who don't know where to voice, where to share, or where to even report. Yes. And we always have this toll-free line for FIDA Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's 0800-720-501. Mm -hmm. okay. That anyone can reach any time so that, that in case of such mishaps that are coming, okay. that they are able to report and be safe. And perhaps in closing, Finally. as I am seeing the pressure, yes. mm -hmm. I would say, as a man mm -hmm. seated here, I may not know how many good men are out there or how many bad men are out there. Mm -hmm. But I would implore other okay. men, let us stop this. On behalf of the good men, okay. mm. I would say kindly, mm -hmm. let uh -huh. us stop this, let us protect our women. Okay, Thank I will you. beg my director to just give me a minute for Jerry and uh, Daktari there. Daktari, let's start with you. Final remarks, please. Final remarks? Yes. Um, thank you very much for having us today. Mm -hmm. And I want to pick it from when we have disasters. If it was drought. I think the executive arm of government would be out there, every other minister mm -hmm. talking about it. When it was COVID, mm -hmm. the same thing happened. When it was uh, whatever disease, mm -hmm. somebody talks. Now, we have a disaster. Mm -hmm. And the executive arm of government, I want to call upon them mm -hmm. to come out and not just leave it to Asia okay. Yuma. Okay. To all of us, let us fight gender-based violence okay. in our own small way, but the executive arm of government, please pronounce yourself. Okay, Thank Dr. You. I want to be as fair as possible. Jerry, your closing remarks. Um, most importantly, we have a march on the 27th. Yes. This march is against femicide, mm. but this march is open to all genders. So 
please can we see you on the Saturday the 27th at mm. Jivanji Gardens let us speak about femicide let us not normalize killing mm. let us not moralize killing there is no reason why women should be killed for that matter They're saying you've been killed because you got money everybody wants money so the issue of money is very nonsensical as far as i'm concerned mm. there is no reason there is no justification okay. for murder of women okay. so let us end femicide mm -hmm. uh, we are totally shutting down kenya on saturday and we are marching yes. for women Okay. And to stop this. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And of course, uh, it's not just to Sikimi. Also, FIDA have issued their statement on similar uh, peaceful procession on the 27th. Thank you so much. That has been my panel, as you can see on the, on the right side or left side of your screen, depending on where you're watching us from. That is Dr. Joyce M. Mutinda, the chairperson of the National Gender Equality Commission, which is in GEC. Also, we have Dennis Otieno, a senior legal counsel of FIDA Kenya, Senator Tabitha Mutinda, um, a, a legislative member of the Senate and Jerry Wamwigui, the Chief Executive Officer of Osikimi. That has been our first panel. Hopefully you've gotten something in terms of the root causes and what are the solutions. Some of these panelists you're seeing on the other side of the studio uh, could be your fathers, could be your mothers, could be your sisters who are trying to at least advise you and hopefully my sisters as well were watching this particular conversation because right now indeed is what um, my panelists clearly stated. It is not safe um, for women and hopefully uh, this is something that can be changed. Of course the clarion call has been on the government to of course talk about this particular issue from the national all the way to the judiciary and the legislature. That have been my first panel. The second panel will be consisting of Jules Delahaj, the CEO of SGA Security, Enoch Alumasi Makanga and of course he is the managing director of Victory Protective Services Africa. We do have an Airbnb representative that is Amanda Kimani, the CEO of Lux Living and finally we do have Dr. Benjamin Koske, a senior lecturer at the Kenyatta University KU and of course he'll be telling us about the psychological uh, point of view that will be my panel in the second hour so don't go too far